Live from WTVO 17 and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. We can't and we won't lose this mall, the criminals. After a Valentine's Day shooting in the parking lot, all eyes are on Cherry Vale Mall and its security. The Four City will soon be a hub for college basketball. Sports director Scott Leber has all you need to know about the NIT tournament's new home. Chocolic frolic this year is all of the chocolate, not so much of the frolic. A local organization that helps people with disabilities can't be stopped by COVID. Its annual fundraiser will satisfy your sweet tooth. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. Eric is off tonight. A shooting just blocks from the Rock River ends in charges against two people. Investigators say Rico Jefferson and Rashawn Jefferson were involved in that shooting on Melrose Street around 530 last night. Witnesses told police they heard gunshots and saw a person lying on the ground. When officers got there, they found a gun and shell casings, but no victim. A while later, both Jeffersons walked into a hospital with gunshot wounds. Rico was treated and released from the ER after being taken into custody. Rashawn is expected to be okay. Both are charged with aggravated discharge of a firearm. Police tracked down a man accused of firing a gun outside Cherry Vale Mall. Marquise Caldwell faces multiple weapons charges after the Valentine's Day shooting. Investigators say this surveillance footage shows Caldwell visiting various stores and following someone from the upper level to the lower level of Macy's. The target then leaves the store and runs towards a white SUV. Caldwell follows, his left arm extended, holding what appears to be a handgun. A security officer heard the gunshots and discovered shell casings in the area. Caldwell was arrested a week later in Wisconsin. That shooting was the latest in a string of violent incidents at Cherryvale Mall. Local law enforcement and prosecutors say they're cracking down on mall security to keep shoppers safe. Michelle Rave joins us live from the mall tonight. Michelle, there are eyes basically everywhere around the mall. That's right, Mimi. Nearly a week after that shooting, we were able to get an inside look at the security, security system here at Cherry Val Mall to catch criminals in the act. We're constantly changing and looking and updating and upgrading our security protocols every day based on traffic pattern, patterns or after every incident. Security has been and still is at the forefront of the Cherry Val Mall. We also have our security department. Our security officers are here 24 hours a day. They are patrolling inside and outside and they are here to to look after our customers, our tenants, our employees. The mall relies heavily on a sophisticated security system with hundreds of views of the inside and outside. We have hundreds of views of this property with high definition cameras. Um, they're, not, they're designed to not be visible and they are designed to give us a clear view of what is happening on the property. Cherry Valley Police Chief Roy Bethke credits those in helping with the Valentine's Day shooting incident. The video surveillance system played a significant role in developing Mr. Caldwell as a suspect. The message to criminals is clear. We're going to have a very, very, very strong police presence with my department, Cherry Valley. I know state police in the city are always very, just right, um, right outside the mall. If we need them, they're always there. If you commit a crime in this mall, we will find you, we will arrest you, and we will convict you. Violence is not welcome here. If you intend to come here and act up, we will find you and we will arrest you. The original video of the shooting featured three men. Cherry Valley Police tell me so far they've identified two men. No word yet if charges have been made. For now, reporting live in Cherry Valley, I'm Michelle Rave. All right, Michelle, thanks for that live report. Rockford takes another big step toward marking itself as a destination for sports tournaments. Leaders from the Convention and Visitors Bureau and the Rockford Park District announced a major tournament will be held in Rockford next month. Sports director Scott Lever joins us now with that story. Scott? Yeah, that's right, Mimi. For the first time ever, Rockford will be hosting a major college basketball tournament, the Women's Postseason NIT or National Invitational Tournament. Three, two, one. 
And the big announcement held this afternoon at the UW Health Sports Factory in downtown Rockford. That's where the tournament games will be held. They'll take place March 19th through the 22nd. Eight Division I women's basketball teams, still to be determined, will be competing here in one of four regionals for the tournament. Typically, WNIT games are played on college campuses of the participating teams, but because of COVID, the WNIT wants only four locations this year, which could be more closely controlled in terms of safety. Local officials say this event will show that Rockford is again open for business as a host city for major sporting events. Now, Rockford's in good company when it comes to the regional host cities. These are the other three, Fort Worth, Charlotte, and Memphis. And one of those cities will also be hosting the final four. That announcement will come at a later date, so Rockford could also host the semifinals and the championship game, potentially. Mimi? Well, that's very exciting. Thanks, Scott. The pandemic set the stage for a strange year for universities. Students and professors were forced to adapt to remote learning. Many schools are now planning for the fall and hoping that things will look more like they used to. The University of Wisconsin system says it plans to resume as much of in-person campus experience as possible this fall, with a goal of at least 75% of all classes being face-to-face. -face. Health experts say the transition will happen as more people get the COVID vaccine. I think that it is absolutely true that college students should get vaccinated as soon as they can. I don't think it's necessary for all of them to be vaccinated for in-person learning to resume, but I do think we need to see the majority of people vaccinated in order to see it safely resuming. Illinois State University also plans for a more traditional campus experience this fall. It says there will be more students living in on-campus housing and a majority of in-person classes. A Stateline shipping store owner intercepts a fraudulent money transfer. We first told you about Marshall Barkley and his shop, Roscoe Pack and Mail, last August. Barkley says he's seen multiple customers nearly fall victim to scams. Ari Bruckman joins us with more on the latest close call. Yeah, Mimi, scammers will disguise themselves as anyone and everyone to get you to send them money. Yesterday, someone posed as an officer from the Milwaukee Police Department. The caller told an elderly couple from Beloit their granddaughter was being held because she was involved in illegal drug-related activity and asked for $8,000 in cash. The couple, obviously concerned, tried to wire the money at Roscoe Pack and Mail, but the owner, Marshall Barkley, realized something wasn't right. I went to the back, I opened it up, it was a magazine and it was completely full of $100 bills. It was a total of $8,000 they were shipping. Barkley stopped the couple from sending the cash and called police. This isn't the only time he's helped out. Last year, someone tried wiring 9000 in a scam. Stay with us at 6. Hear what Roscoe's police chief believes may be the answer to prevent this from happening. Mimi? Thanks, Ari. Now, that scam is called the grandparent scam. Dennis Horton with the BBB says these people are professionals waiting for you to give them information they can use against you or they don't use a name at all. They'll just simply say, hi, this is your grandson or your granddaughter who is calling. And you say, oh, hello, Johnny, how are you? And they say, oh, I'm fine. Well, you've already given them the name of your grandchild. Bottom line, if you get a phone call from a number you don't know, don't engage with the caller, just hang up. If you do get scammed, you can report it to the BBB scam tracker. The BBB reports those weekly to police, and you can see what kind of scams are going on in your neighborhood. The pandemic couldn't stop one of the state line's tastiest fundraisers from helping a local organization. Chocoholic Frolic is happening right now at Aldine Golf Course. Rather than the typical in-person event, boxes of sweets are being handed out drive through style. Chocolate Crave cases are filled with 20 unique and local options, as well as a $10 gift card to a state line small business. Proceeds will benefit the Ark of Winnebago, Boone, and Ogle counties, which helps provide training and other programs for people with developmental disabilities. This fundraising for us is crucial to keep those programs going, in particular our art program, um, as well as our rep payee service that helps individuals who are living in the community on their own and just need help managing their money. Chocoholic Frolic will wrap up at 7 tonight. House lawmakers plan to vote on the American Rescue Plan, President Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID relief package, as early as the end of this week. Our Washington correspondent, Basil John, has more on where lawmakers stand on getting relief out, as it keeps you connected to the nation's capital. The clock is ticking for Congress as the next COVID relief package hangs in the balance. I hope Congress passes 
the American re Rescue Plan, which I've been pushing. President Joe Biden remains hopeful his $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan will make it to his desk. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki says passing the package is critical to help Americans. They clearly want money for vaccinations. They clearly want uh, schools to reopen and funding to reopen schools, and they clearly want direct checks. The need is great. Uh, the opportunity is there, and the precision of this legislation to directly address the needs of the American people. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi expects the House to pass the American Rescue Plan by the end of the week, despite facing strong opposition from Republicans in both the House and Senate. Ninety-two percent of the bill is not connected to COVID. Republicans like Texas Senator Ted Cruz argue the package is wasteful. But it's simply paying off their political allies back home. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says Senate Democrats are prepared to move with or without Republicans. The American people know we're in a historic crisis, and the Senate will soon take action on our plan to solve this crisis. Democrats are expected to use a process called budget reconciliation, which only requires a simple majority. Texas Republican Senator John Cornyn says that's not the right way to go about passing more relief. The correct ruling would be to say that uh, the budget process cannot be used to pass substantive legislation. Now, your first worn weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, another beautiful day after starting off with temperatures in the upper teens and low 20s. We warmed nicely once again this afternoon following plenty of sunshine. A little more cloud cover found, though, down to the south. A live look with our Mercy Sky SkyTrack camera out of the Park Hills Golf Course this evening in Freeport. Great part about this view, one, the sunshine, but two, the fact that we're still able to see as much sun at 516 at night. In fact, that sun does set a little after 530 here this evening. Now we've got a couple of clouds still passing to the south. Those will continue to move out over the next few hours. High pressure building into the west and kind of sandwiched between two active branches of the jet stream. One to the north bringing a system into the Pacific Northwest and then one coming down across the southwest allowing that cloud cover to stream in from the southwest and some of that rain you see coming now over Texas and moving into Oklahoma. As high pressure continues to build east, it will push that cloud cover down to the south, leaving us with a mostly clear sky. But what that is likely going to do for us tonight as our wind turns light, I'll get some fog in here after midnight and some of that fog could actually persist into tomorrow morning. So that would be the one thing we'll have to keep an eye on just how dense some of that fog could get. And with temperatures once again falling below freezing, some freezing fog will be possible. Now we won't start off with as much sunshine or as clear of a sky as we did this morning. You've got the fog and some cloud cover that'll be with us and for some could last through about mid morning. But by the afternoon, we'll see a little bit more sunshine as the wind kind it kicks up from the southeast. Cloud cover, though, will filter back in. We've got another quick moving system. Remember that jet stream over the northwest? Well, that low pressure system works closer to us tomorrow night. With temperatures very close to freezing, Overnight Friday into Saturday, it's likely a lot of this will come down as very light rain. Could see some snow mixed in close to the Illinois Wisconsin border, but even that, notice it's not a lot. So, not expecting this to cause too much of an issue, but that is going to be with us most likely after about 9 or 10 o'clock tomorrow evening. That, though, is out of here quickly by Saturday morning, leaving us with a dry and mostly sunny day on Saturday. Cloud cover then comes back in. Another chance for very, very light rain snow mix Saturday night. Temperature wise, we're at 32 in Freeport, 37 in Rockford, 31 in Rochelle, 37 for Ken and Belvedere, 39 in South Beloit at Ben's Place, and our weather watcher Bob this evening checking in with 37. Hey, you notice it feels warmer. It just feels warmer, right? When we get the sunshine out there, that's because our sun angle is getting higher and stronger in the atmosphere compared to where we were back in December uh, at the beginning of winter, December 20th. That sun angle continues to grow, allowing the sun uh, to become a little stronger and giving us more energy. And two, our days are getting longer, so we're able to really kind of absorb a lot of that solar insulation. Uh, we'll lose that, though, tonight, down to 19 degrees. Watch for that fog tomorrow back up to 39 for tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures in the 40s for both Saturday and Sunday. A little dip in the numbers, Mimi, come Monday, but looks like next week we could have a string of that 40-degree warmth sticking around, and I think by this time next week, a lot of that snow 
is going to be gone. Our first warning interactive radar brought to us by Rockford Auto Glass and more. Skies will stay clear as we go through the night tonight. Watch for some fog though tomorrow morning. Uh, visibility could drop under about a mile or two in some spots by the morning hours. Slight chance for a rain snow mix late Friday, but the 40s for the weekend. All right, thanks, Candace, and thanks for watching. We'll see you again at 6.